Okay, so this is a quick example of how to get Creosan up and running with Creo Parametric. I think you'll find it very easy. It does have one requirement though, and that is that you have JLink installed with Creo Parametric. Once you have that going, everything else can pretty much download and run. Uh, we do include a copy of the Java um, service so that you don't have to have that locally on your computer. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to the uh, site here. And there's a couple of things I want to point out. Number one, you know, this link here is going to take you to the latest Creosan releases that we have published on GitHub. But there's also a couple of videos here that you should probably just take a look at to understand um, Creosan a little bit and the principles, principles behind it. So we're going to start off by first uh, downloading uh, Creosan. So in this case, I'm just going to download a 64-bit version. Once this is downloaded, we're going to copy the zip file to a, a local directory. So um, let's show the folder for downloads here. And this is the zip file that was downloaded. I'm just going to move it over to a, a Creosan directory that I've already created. And then we're just going to extract it. So once we extract it, we're going to be able to um, launch it directly from that folder. So now that we have that downloaded, the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to click into the directory. And you'll notice here there's a Creosan setup uh, uh, file. So let me get rid of the web browser that's open here. So we're going to double click on this Creosan setup file. You want to accept any security warnings that you get uh, from your local computer. And this is the actual Creosan uh, setup screen. So all this does is this sets up a small little batch file um, that localizes, but this um, this application actually verifies and confirms things so that you don't spend a lot of time messing around with directories trying to get the right one. So if I select this, going to just give it the name of the PTC uh, installation that we want to use. So in this case, I'm using Creo 3M70. And then um, uh, once I've completed the pathing requirements for it, it will accept it. If it doesn't accept it, it'll turn red and show us where the problem is. Um, a port number is usually something that's needed for a web server to listen to. So we want to avoid the standard ports like port 80 and you know, 443, which are standard web protocols. Since we're running this locally, we could choose pretty much anything we want, but you may want to double check your firewall settings to see if there's anything you should be using locally. So we're going to just take this default uh, that we have here of 9056. Once we have those two settings kind of confirmed, uh, the only thing we have to do is just press the start Creosan button. Now it's actually starting a microserver that is going to listen for JSON requests. Once that server is started, the only thing you can really do now is start communicating with, with your app, or you can open the documentation, uh, which is also being fed off that small little uh, microserver. And you can read through the instructions, like uh, what is the quick start instructions? What are the minimum requirements? Um, we also have a playground here, uh, which allows you to actually interact with Creo directly. So the fact that we've localized it here uh, with the Creosan setup application, we got it up and running, and we have JLink already running or installed with Creo, uh, we can actually come in here and start to play with it right away. So I've just connected to Creosan server, and now I'm ready to accept commands. So uh, the current working directory that I have here, just so you show there's nothing up our sleeve here, there's nothing in session. And uh, it's a speaker demo that we've used in the past. So if I wanted to load up uh, speaker.asm and then press the open button, you'll notice the first time it connects, it takes just a second, but then it eventually opens this up. Uh, this again is just running from a web page through the Creosan microserver to Creo and then back. And if you want to, you can actually look at the transaction that was ran uh, for Creosan. So this is the actual instruction that was sent, and this is the, the data that came back. So it, just confirming that it opened the file, what version the file's at, and the directory that we're running from. You can also modify this to say, well, I just want uh, uh, ASKT.PRT. Maybe I want just the basket part. And you can see just that quickly it opens, or maybe maybe the spider, or maybe the, um, let's see, maybe there's a screw in there that we're interested in. And you can see here that it's just showing us the transactions that we've ran and the responses we get. Once you have this uh, up and running, uh, we also put in the ability to kind of do parameters within this little demonstration here. So if we change over to, let's go back to the, the basket, and then I'm just going to do a search for all parameters. Uh, again, these are just running JSON uh, requests back and forth. So if I wanted to limit uh, things by wildcard, we could do that. And you could also view the transactions that um, 
uh, we're sending back and forth uh, to the Creosan server that are ultimately transforming into Jake link calls to perform operations within Creo. Uh, it's a very handy um, uh, interface, very easy to use, very easy to develop with. And uh, we look forward to all the feedback that's going to come from the community out there.